y'all want to come down and do that? I don't want to. I want to eat everything at one time. So you, I hear you all in the neighborhood. I'm trying. Jeez, it's a slow from, job. You went from biking to jogging. Yeah, I did both. Let's be you. Let's be all terrain. No, I was meaning Gan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of my neighborhood. I heard Charlie told me. Charlie told me to say it. Sarah's over there. He's on there to bake people. He loves to bake people. Y'all can stand up and clap if you'd like. Are we on TV? We're on TV. Oh, 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 you're on TV. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Raise your right hand, please. And repeat after me. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. That I possess all the qualifications. That I possess all the qualifications. For the office of city council. For the office of city council. As prescribed by the city, the city of Clinton Charter. As prescribed by the city of Clinton Charter. And that I will support the Constitution. And that I will support the Constitution. And obey the laws of the United States. And then obey the laws of the United States. And the state of Tennessee. And the state of Tennessee. And that I will observe the provisions of the Charter. And that I will observe the provisions of the Charter. And the ordinances of the city of Clinton, Tennessee. And the ordinances of the city of Clinton, Tennessee. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of this office. The duties of this office. Thank you, John. Congratulations. <laughs> One more year. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <clears throat> oh, Ken, you missed that. It's the most important part. <laughs> I know it's not as easy as you want. I, he took a picture. I want to throw a. Um, <laughs> An Obama story out there, real quick. When he came in to take take um, take PM to take Mark, um, I had a chance to meet him. He and he said, "Well, how long have you been mayor?" I said, "Well, I just was reelected for my second term." He, lo he looked at me and said, "Well, you must be doing a pretty good job." And you know me, I have to say something smart. And I said, "Well, I'm either doing a pretty good job or nobody else wants to do it." <laughs> so he got a chuckle out of that. But thank you all for your service and signing up for four more years. Enjoy working with you guys. Um, a public hearing. Call to order, please. Roll call. Councilman Bannon. Here. Councilman McBride. Councilman Harrell. Here. Councilman Stamey. Here. Councilman Hatmaker. Here. Councilman Thera. Here. Mayor Burton. Here. Um, public hearing is on ordinance number 653, smoking at playgrounds. That sounds so bad when you say it that way. Anyone here would like to speak on that? Any questions or concerns? Your motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Moved. Motion passes. Regular agenda. Call to order. Councilman Gant. Here. Councilman McBride. Councilman Harrell. Here. Councilman Stanley. Here. Councilman Hatmaker. Here. Councilman Fair. Here. And Mayor Burton. Here. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The prayer this evening will be given, or this afternoon, will be given by Council McGann. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, in this season, we thank you for all the gifts that you bestowed upon us as we celebrate with family. We pray that you would be with us, protect us, help us to use good judgment in our, in our times, but always remember that you are there for us. Be with us now as we conduct the business of the city that we may do what is in the best interest of our fellow citizens, that we may look forward to a better 2021, and that we may all celebrate our lives in thee. For it's in thy name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Larry. Um, I should have said this before the prayer, but uh, just have um, um, a prayer for um, Maude Riggs. It's just Bill Riggs here, a long time employee in the city. His, his mother passed away a few days ago. 
And we just heard that Fred Fox, longtime resident in, in Clinton, also passed away just within the hour. Um, so our thoughts and prayers are with, with their families. And um, as we go along this, this road we're on, hopefully, I'm so thankful that 2020 is, uh, is approaching its end, and, uh, and, and I just look forward to better and broader days. I know will be coming in 2021, but my thoughts and <coughs> prayers are, are for, um, for Bill and for Ona and their family and, and um, all their family, so in France. Do I hear a motion for the review and the approval of minutes of the previous meeting dated November 23rd, 2020? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion pass passes. At uh, this time, um, recognize any visitors or citizens? Scott, you have anything that you'd like to state? I know you've been very vocal here lately. I didn't know if you wanted to throw something out at us. Well, I didn't want to use up my no, you're fine. When you come up, you come up. You can you can, you can share those. Um, communications with the mayor or from the mayor. Um, this is the time of the year too that we reappoint. In this case, reappoint um, Vice Mayor Zach Fair. He's been our vice mayor for the last two years. He's done an outstanding job, and and what I've done with Jim and and also with Rob. I've, I've done four-year terms on that, and um, talked to Zach this morning. He was um, very gracious in saying that he would love to, to be vice mayor for two more years. So, um, but I need a motion for that. So moved. Okay. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks again. Thank I you, Mayor. It. I have a number, this has been the year-end meeting, I have a number of committees and people to fill and all that good stuff so I'll make it as painless as possible um, under the Clinton Regional Planning Commission I'd like to reappoint Gary Whitley Councilman Larry Gann congratulations Larry I didn't tell you that but if you don't <laughs> speak up you get reappointed and Jonathan Thomas um, their term would be ending December 31st 2025 Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. On the Clinton E911 um, Communications District Committee, um, Jim Sanderson, as we all know, has moved up to Kentucky and he has to be taken off that. I'd like to um, nominate Steve Pyatt to serve out his remaining term, term ending July 1st, 2023. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Under Clinton Housing Authority, I'd like to reappoint Stephen Queener um, to that post. His term will end December 31st, 2025. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, I have one for the community action, but um, I'll go ahead and reappoint. Um, Lincoln Barton. His term ending December 31st, 2021. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I'd like to reappoint the individuals on the Clinton Recreation Advisory Board. Um, that includes Ed Rosenbaum, Gary Terry, and Councilman Stamey. Um, this term will run through December 31st, 2022. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Um, Community Development Citizens Advisory Board. This is a three year term, term ending December 31st, 2023. I'd like to reappoint Shirley Cook, Leela Del Monte, Charlie Lane. In Richard Holbrook. Hear a motion for approval? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Motion passes. Under Clinton Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, I'd like to reappoint Kenny Klotfelter, if I mispronounce your name, I, I apologize. Um, John Miller and Joe Rainey. Their term will be ending December 31st, 2023. Hear a motion for approval? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The um, Elder Citizens Advisory Board, I'd like to reappoint Councilman McBride to a four-year term, term ending November 30th, 2024. Hear a motion for approval? So Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Um, historic zoning, uh, this is a five-year term, term ending December 31st, 2020. I'd like to reappoint Art Miller, Robert Manning, and Missy Sneed. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And um, Larry, with this, the Mr. Manning was, you know, he, that's one person from Planning Commission comes on. My understanding is he's not going to run again, but he has one year left. So after, the, after this time next year, we'll reappoint somebody from Planning Commission to take his spot. Okay. Um, beautification Board. I am, I am really excited about Beautification Board. And, and I was thinking, um, from my understanding, um, this board was developed, what, 20, 20 years ago? Mr. Diggs, uh, Mayor, Mayor Diggs developed this. Yeah, it's been a long time ago. And, and the, the main purpose was, was what I want to bring it back to. I think it's kind of gotten, well, it's not been real active, number one, but it's really been more focused on Market Street, Christmas lights and things like this. What I'd like to do is make it much broader um, and, and I was thinking if anybody's been off Campbell Station Road where the library is and they have the walking trails, the trees there, the Christmas trees and stuff, it's, it's beautiful. And we have so much land here as far as our parks and our city property that we can start doing some more things throughout the city, not just focus on Market Street to, to really, especially during the holiday season. But also I have thoughts about, you know, like uh, Kathy Brown was, was generous enough to donate the, the land on Market Street. To have this board kind of develop that and give their recommendations how that's going to look. You know, I th and I think there's some very talented people on this board. I like for, the, for this board to look at our entrances into our city and, 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 and beautify, if you will, that signage when you, when you come in. And I think, I think we have some great people on this board to do that. So I think, I think they need to get more involved. We, we did it all in one year, but I think we had the money in, in our budget to put towards things to, 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 be, to, to best put our, the city's best foot forward, what I'm trying to say. So with that being said, I took a, I, I switched a couple of people around. Uh, I'm really excited that I want to add um, Sam George on this board. And it goes with Dudley Bostics on it. Um, JB, is, is, we're going to put um, Taylor Huddleston on that because she's taking a new role with the city, which I think will, will be a good thing too. Um, Catherine Burbeck's on it. Molly, Molly's on it, Farrah. And um, I'd ask Larry for, if I could be on it. Um, he's on a lot of boards anyway. But I just want to be on it just to help facilitate um, as far as what their needs are, what they want to do, make sure that on the city side we can do that. So with that being said, I'd like to um, appoint Sam George to finish out a term um, December 31st, 2023. And I would like to nom appoint myself um, in Larry's place and the term ends the same at December 31st, 2023. So here a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Thoughts? I'm, I am, I am, I'm excited about this what this board can be and I'm, I'm and I'm looking forward to see what we can do in the next couple of years um, all in favor say aye, aye. opposed motion passes um, tree advisory board I like to to reappoint Larry Gann Lynn Murphy Riley Sane Greg McAnally and Jason Brown to a four-year term term ending November 30th 2024 here a motion for approval so moved 
Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Can that be merged with beautification, or are we just kind of Well, it's it's that? really two different things. Okay. Yeah, it's just more tree city. it's tree city. Yeah, yeah. 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 certain qualifications. And, and again, a lot of these things that, that we have, a lot of these boards, and a lot, a lot I want to say, there's a certain percentage of boards that aren't active, but. For you, I mean, you probably know this, but for our viewing audiences, we have to have some of these boards in order to get the grant money sure. and to keep that Makes maintained. Sense for the yeah, so yeah, I think it, that needs to be. And Riley has done a, a fantastic job. He's of course, very, this, <clears throat> yeah, very well organized and knows exactly what we need to do. And with this year, with everything going on, it's been tough for them to do do much. Um, but I'm sure they'll get going again in 2021. So. And CUB has been big help. Yeah. Greg yep. McAnally has been a big help with that. Yeah. So with that being said, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Motion passes. And that is it. Committee reports. Ms. Johnson, do you have anything? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> all right. Do you want to give us any type of update on COVID and what the what what's going on and what's going on in the state or any updates from that standpoint? Do you want to? <laughs> you got up kind of slow. <laughs> no, we are still in school till 2:45 today. Well, this is our 80, 82nd day of instruction, I believe. So we were able to remain open brick and mortar all semester. So we're super proud of that. Um, once again, we've uh, we've dealt with more staff positives and student quarantines. So the students, once again, have not really been a significant issue. We have had a couple of, pos well, more than a couple, but we have had several positive cases of students, but the majority have been either staff members and then a lot of students quarantined due to household contacts. But we were able to make it through the semester. We've given our already mid-year benchmarking that is looking very, very promising that despite the global pandemic, despite uh, multiple quarantines and isolations, our kids are extremely resilient and are doing very, very well. So we are super, super excited about that. We were able to have um, three basketball games before we shut her down for, um, for December, just to give everybody a chance to stay away from each other and try to keep people healthy for the, healthy for the holidays. But we hope that the conditions are such that we can finish out a few more games in January for the boys and girls that that are participating in that. But other than that, it's been a great semester. Our teachers have done a phenomenal job. Our, our staff, kudos to them. They have worked endless hours, have been extremely dedicated in putting these mitigation efforts. They've been eating lunch with kids. They've been staying late. They've been dealing with lots of social and emotional supports for kids. And, and so uh, they, are, they, are, they are a big part in our reasoning and why we were able to stay open. So certainly want to give them a big shout out. But any what, questions? What do you think? Why do you think, um, I want to jump right in. Okay. Why do you think the school systems, like you have to be, if you're exposed or contact, you have to be out 24 days versus CD, CDC recommendations only 10 days. Do they, yeah. even give, they give you any rationale behind that? Well, the, if, if it was 14, 14 and 24 for household <laughs> contact. And so Tennessee Department of Health mirrors the CDC. So the CDC made those changes to where now if you are a close contact, you are out for 10 days. But if you are a household, it is 20 days. Because what, what they say is you've got to live, the person that you live with that's infected, you have to give them 10 days to get better. And then your 10 day quarantine starts in. Okay. And so the health department made it very clear at the beginning that we were not in charge of return to school dates, that we just give them the information and they have a school research team that then determines when staff and students are able to come back. We can give an estimated based on what the guidelines are, but then they receive a phone call and, and get verification of all the dates that we've turned in, and then they give the official return to school date. I so. thought it was interesting. Um, Dr. Fauci said this week, I was watching the news or read an article that, that his preference would be the kids need to be in school mm -hmm. versus being at home. Yep. And, and I that think we've, goes we've seen a lot of that. that people are saying and seeing, but yeah. but I think we're we being you all have shown a shown the way to do it. Well, it, you we've been encouraged even by the Department of Health to not shut down the entire district. That you you deal with the isolated pockets. So in order to be transparent, we had four classrooms by the end of today that were closed early. 
um, just due to uh, due to some positive cases. But we were able just to shut down classrooms instead of shutting down the entire school. So the majority of our kids were still able to come to school until the end of to the until the end of the first semester. So that that is what I hope to continue. Uh, we do have a plan in place if there is a huge outbreak and we just can't sustain that we might end up having to go virtual for a time span in January or February. Um, I'll do it kicking and screaming, but we're prepared to do that if the if the data shows that that's what we need to do. With that being said, how could you possibly keep up the ones that's infected after the break starts? How will you personally keep up with the, those people, you think? Like what happens over the break? Yeah, to make a decision about the fifth. Um, well, we, we, we've encouraged parents, and parents really have done a great job with well, they'll hopefully still continue to call us if there's, a, if there's a student positive or a household contact. Parents have done a remarkable job of calling us and letting us know. So central office remains, remains open, and it will be open that week before uh, New Year's Eve and uh, New Year's Day. So our hope is that they'll communicate that with principals or a central office so we can have that documented before the doors open. But our goal is, is to open back brick and mortar on January the 5th. Great. Any other questions? As always, thank you. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Scott, do you have anything? No, he does okay. not. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ooh. I was about to say, I wasn't going to go there, but I was thinking it. Um, Clinton Regional Planning Commission report. Councilman Gann. The, uh, Clinton Regional Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals met on December 14th. Might just mention that two of our members are uh, dealing with COVID. Gary Whitley Sr. is in the hospital, as I understand, uh, dealing with it, and uh, Dave McCune is quarantined at home. So keep, obviously keep those in your thoughts and prayers. The Board of Zoning and Appeals uh, applicant Holly Gamble Cremation Service requesting administrator review for property located at 621 South Charles G. Sievers Boulevard. This is really just a, a review. We really don't have any power to accept or decline, but there were some questions. And since we did not have a representative there, we voted to defer that until we can at least get those questions answered. Should not be a major thing. It should be rather minor. So hopefully get that moved on. Again, we really don't have any, any power control there. Applicant Sinking Springs LLC requesting front setback variance to 18 feet for property located at 2180 North Charles G. Seavers Boulevard. And then in the Regional Planning Commission, you notice that they also requested a site plan review for the same property. This is, the, uh, this is property adjoining uh, the new buddies. And they're going to be putting in, apparently, uh, they're not sure at this stage how many, but to either two or three businesses. And the need for their variance really wasn't for building, it was for that they needed ex some extra space for their dumpsters. So there will be no permanent building, it's just the fact that the dumpsters would be on the, on the variance, so that was, that was granted. In fact, Joe, Joe Barrett, our advisor, said, uh, really with dumpsters, there, there's not a need for a variance, but let's go ahead and do it. So we'll make sure we got everything covered. Uh, but that's, that's a new business coming up there near Buddies at, at some point, so. And then uh, review of non-residential accessory structures, temporary mobile factory built or factory assembled structures, uh, draft put together along with Joe, which we passed on to, uh, to city administration for, you know, to look at there. And I'm sure we'll be seeing that sometime in the future. And then also continuing discussion about uh, the agricultural uh, plan as it, as it stands. Uh, any questions? Any questions for Larry? Um, let me go back to the, the the building next to Buddy's. Is that going to be like? Is it going to be built like a little, like like what they built before? Or is it going to be two two independent buildings? No, it's going to be. Uh, they're two independent buildings. There'll okay. be a road separating. In fact, he told us they're going to put in the same cobblestone parking lot. So it's going to be similar, but it's going to be a separate building, and they hope to buy some adjoining properties there to extend it on back off the road. So they like they've already got contracts and, and been. Or he he wasn't very divulging about it, right. but they're most working of, on it. Most of them aren't. <laughs> Under the planning commission, the um, the non-residential accessory structures. Is this the temporary storage units that we've been talking about? Yeah, you still working uh, on that. What we, what, well, we we sent a draft. Uh, we're kind of in a bind there. We you know we've got a good number of them around the city, <clears throat> grandfathered, and so what we did was put together a draft. To, 
from this point, here's the guidelines that we're going to operate under. Yeah, I think it's very much needed. Yeah, it's uh, before it gets out of hand. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's it's a problem that's that's probably going to grow unless yeah. we're careful. I'm seeing since you brought it up a couple months ago, the the um, the 18 wheeler storage, you know. What, what do you call it, the carriers? Yeah, they just you're drop see, them. You're seeing more and more of those throughout the county in, in, my, in my travels. For businesses, it's a great place of storage. For us, it's a, it's it's a, a nice store. It's a nice store. You're right. The um, One other question I had on this was the, the animal ordinance. Mm -hmm. There were some comments made that that the Planning Commission needs more information than what they've been getting from, from, the, from the city. What, what, what specifically it, do they need from us? What was left with us was that City Council wanted oversight over agricultural vari uh, variances. And so we need some kind of structure there. Is what are you looking for? I don't, Bill could probably put, try to put something together there. We're working on that. There's some disagreements, I guess, <laughs> on how to proceed with this. We're looking at it. We've actually sent it to MTAS attorneys to ask them for some help on it. It's more in the what can we enforce type deal is what we're looking at. So we're hoping to get some clarifications by January. As far as types of animals or sizes really. Well, acreage. really the, the overlay, Volume. whether or not you can have a agricultural zone overlay, okay. uh, some discrepancy whether we can do that or not. I think we can to govern it that way, but we'll, we're asking them tax attorneys to clarify it for us. Okay. There's nothing that we've passed thus far that would allow people like, for example, on Eagle Bend to put farm animals. No, we're right. We're within the guidelines of what we've already put together. Right. Well, that's my understanding. We've too. got the thousand sure. foot, still got the thousand foot border and we've got size limitations. Three acres. Yeah. Yeah. We've started Middle three acres. Okay. We've got size limitations and, uh, you know, space between the next area. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Thanks, Larry. Clinton Utilities Board report. Councilman Fair. I Filed the financials in our packet, and I'll take any questions. Any questions for Zach? Thank you. Again, I would think um, as a council to. I, I haven't had a chance to. I usually see Greg at a, one of the luncheons. Of course, those have been canceled this year. But thank him again for in lieu of taxes. I think it's 1.7 million, and that will go to good use. Appreciate that. Um, Larry, do you have anything else under other I board say, and community reports? Well, Roger will probably get into the green macadoo, so I'll leave that. Has that breakfast been canceled for the was it seventh? Probably. I would I would I would assume so. I just haven't heard confirmation the MLK. on that. Hmm? The MLK breakfast. Mm -hmm. well, I was I'm sure he'll deal with the, the direct the T's selection process for the new director. Okay. All right. Well, he'll have an opportunity to do that under general government report. Mr. Houck. Mayor, I don't have a whole lot, just kind of a couple information uh, items. With the new Buddy's Barbecue being done, of course, we've had issues uh, there with Dover and Boulevard, which is a county road, but actually coming into the city road. The plans with the developers of, of Buddy's was to bring sinking springs where it used to just kind of wind into it, actually create a new road, which is Glen Alpine Drive, I think it is which will be directly across from Dole Run. We, uh, as of yesterday, hired uh, Cannon Cannon engineers, traffic engineers, to do a study and hopefully a design of putting a traffic signal there. And also, we're having them look at Tanner Lane at Hillville. The same thing, we've got uh, the Walmart's always been busy, but we've got a new uh, Dollar Tree going in, going up there also. And then, of course, we've got the five-story hotel that probably will open up sometime in spring. So we're just trying to look at our traffic situation up there and get ahead of it. Uh, the Hillville signal will be solely on us. We don't have to have TDOT approval. The one on the boulevard, we'll have to go through TDOT, so it'll probably take a while, but uh, at least we've got it started. Um, costly, both projects probably be $150,000 when we get ready to do them, some estimates. Uh, the other thing is what uh, Let me interrupt yes. uh, I've got some calls, some questions about the road near Aspire Park. Uh, in in you know, going back over the railroad track and everything, is that our road? Is that the county's? I know it's in disrepair right now, and I've had several citizens saying, is there anything we can do about that? Well, that's the road that Aspire is actually reworking. Yeah, that's what the plan was back fall break. We were let them shut. Yarnell or the road down yeah. where they could completely work over the week and have it open. Well, TDOT ran into some design problems on drainage. 
They had to rework their plans. That's why they were having to do it. We wouldn't let them shut it down totally again since school was back in. So that's why they've been working on it. I was actually over there yesterday. I mean, it's not too bad a shape. Uh, I don't know how much longer it's going to take them to complete it. Aspire Park Drive right now will be private. I'm sure they'll probably at some point request the city to take it in. Um, and the same with Glen Alpine. I got an email this morning. Uh, Andy Helmer with the Buddies Barbecue there will, will request that we take Glen Alpine Drive in, which is just a little stretch next to Buddies Barbecue. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the other thing Coach Gamble was talking about was, um, as we know, Marilyn Hayden is retiring January 21st. So we went through probably one of the most lengthiest process of hiring somebody besides our HR director than we, than we did. I actually put together a panel uh, to do the interview, which was Ashley Howe, who's the executive director of the State Museum out of Nashville. One of her assistants, Tammy Edwards, who's director of special <coughs> projects. We actually had Marilyn sit on the board, Angela Sylvester, HR director, and myself. Um, this was posted nationally. We had over 2,200 people <coughs> look at the advertisement. We had over 60 plus apply for it. We narrowed that down to what we felt like was the top six. Uh, did an interview process with the community center. Spent really, I guess it was a day and a half, two days uh, going through it. It was a unanimous decision between all five of us that Adam Velk was selected as the new museum director. Uh, a little bit of history on Adam. Um, he has a master's degree in public history and museum management from the University of Illinois at Springfield, a bachelor's degree in history from the University of Hartford. Um, some of his previous jobs, he was, um, let's see, consulting for the Central Illinois African American History Museum on community engagement. He assisted in running the Illinois Harvest in conjunction with the University of Illinois, a capstone on the effectiveness of American, African American violence during the Civil War movement. He also wrote applications for the National Historic Registry. Uh, work experience, he is currently working for the National Park Service at Padre Island National Seashore in Corpus Christi, Texas. He um, was a park ranger at the Abraham Lincoln National Historic Site in Springfield, Illinois. He worked with the National Park Service as liaison to the White House in Washington, D.C. So he was very impressive, very outgoing. Um, so we, we all thought it was a very good hire. Uh, tell a little story about him. We all know Jerry Shattuck, which Jerry's on the Green McAdoo board. I asked Jerry to come in and meet with him after we uh, hired him. I gave Jerry his resume. Jerry comes back the next day and tells me that he had an old roommate that had a son that worked for the National Park Service. So he calls. We all know Jerry. He's going to do his research. He's called this guy and asked this guy's son, hey, can you check Adam out see what you know? Well, he knew the museum director at the Abraham Lincoln one. So this guy calls her. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about Adam? Jerry's response was that she said he's a rock star and we would hire him back in a minute if we could. <clears throat> so we think we did really good. He's currently in Texas. He's going to leave 1st of January, uh, driving up here. He actually drove up here for the interview, him and his dog. So, <laughs> interesting. What kind of dog do you have? I think it's just a mutt. <laughs> but also in the interview process, we have one local, uh, Jenna Seats. Jana has worked for me at the rec department probably since she was 16. She had in the last couple years she's been at school. But Jana also, um, let me get it here. Jana has a Bachelor of Science degree from Middle Tennessee State University with a major in political science and a minor in African American studies. She also has an Associate of Applied Science degree at Rome State Community College. And Jana's also volunteered at the museum over the years. So our thought process, and this was kind of Ms. Howe's thought, uh, the executive director, if we could hire Adam as our full-time, hire Jana as a part-time employee, which we've had before, let her work with them. One of the big things we want to do, and Coach Gant can speak on this, the board, the advisory board, and all of us always wanted to, to try to take it to another level, get people up there, get the schools involved more. We think we're having both of them there as a team working, that we can hopefully take it to the next level. Uh, we're hoping they can do some fundraisers and maybe even the second job work into a full-time position down the road. We want to utilize the gymnasium more for some special events, activity, community activities. I think the last thing we've probably done in there was the Martin Luther King breakfast last year. So we're kind of excited about where this could take us. Okay. Questions? Is that it? For that, I was going to defer to Gail for the... <laughs> Any questions on this? Yeah, I'll let you do the finance. Um, 
this move, this um, financial statement, we do not have sales tax or state shared revenues in it like we normally do. We don't get them in time. I got the sales tax information to earlier today. Um, we are up 11.29% this month, which gives us a 6.7% year to date. Anderson County in total was up 14.09%. Anderson County outside any city limits was up 64 and three quarter percent again. So we're still working those issues. So can you, uh, go ahead. any updates on, can you just tell us a little bit about, more about the process or what's the next step on trying to figure out what, you know, what that is? Well, we I want to make some phone calls to the Department of Revenue and I have not had a chance to do that. We, I'm in the process of finalizing our audit right now, so I just haven't had a chance. But hope to make some phone calls to the Department of Revenue and see if there's anything I can find out. I've got a couple of contacts at MTAS I want to talk to and see if, if they're seeing this in other cities or what they're seeing. And I, I just haven't had a chance to do it. You were also, I think, going to go to the post office and see if there was a way to, with zip codes to... I, I pulled some information on what we could do and, and we can pursue that avenue. I don't know that we'll get very far with that, but um, it does take, from my understanding, the post office to... So it's still on our radar, um, but we, we really haven't pursued much yet. You would think we would have public access to where addresses, what bucket they go into. And it sounds like the discussions I've had with you, that's been a challenge. Well, used to, of course, I see what the city gets. So I, I have specific information um, as to what businesses generate sales tax for the city of Clinton. What I used to be able to get, because I review that monthly to be sure that um, somebody's not dropped off if we get a new business, you know, buddies, I'll be looking for buddies to be sure that, you know, we're getting those sales tax. What I used to do was at least once a year, I would get the same report for all of Anderson County and every city in Anderson County. Because obviously it's easier, easier to look and see what's on theirs that sh rather than I'm looking for what's missing, it's easier to find what's there that should be ours. I can no longer get that. Why well, is that? Can, can that be regotten? Uh, that's Department of Revenue. Okay. So, um, but in this case, with what I see in internet sales, um, I see a lot of individual businesses, and it, it just depends upon whether or not they are registered with Department of Revenue or if they're not. So, I don't know. Everything changed in October, and it's just going to take us a while to figure out who knows what and what information we can get. Department well, of Revenue do, is not very forthcoming in information, and part of that is rightfully so. The information that I have, I don't disclose to anybody because it's business related. Mm -hmm. So in, in their arena, they don't want that information just out there for anybody to know. So I understand that, mm -hmm. but it hinders us in, in a lot of ways. Do you have a best guess feel on what we're missing as far as revenue, perhaps? No, I have no idea. Maybe it may not be missing anything. It may be the way the law was written that that's the way it's distributed, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me right now. I mean, you just think of just businesses outside our cities in the county. I just don't see a lot. Well, lot. it has to be a generation from internet from out-of-state sales. I feel like it has to be that because mm -hmm. it changed in October, and that's when the law changed. It's just a matter of figuring out is it being allocated correctly based yeah. on Clinton. And of course, that just doesn't impact us. It impacts the school too, as far as tax dollars. So, I have um, a lot of confidence that if anybody can find it, it'll be you. So we're working. On I'll it. sleep good on that. Um, Property tax, nothing new as far as our financials. We're, our revenues and expenditures are looking good. We've not really been hit in any area. Um, property tax, we've collected today about 23%, a little over 900,000, so our collections are looking very good so far. Any questions for Gail? Thank you, Gail. Roger, you have anything else? You know, one thing I was thinking about 
before I even talk to you about, we've talked a little bit about this in the past, is, you know, we have so much stuff going on. And from a city council standpoint, you know, I, I even, I mean, I even think about, well, whatever happened with this? Whatever happened with that? And I was just going to throw it out there and see what everybody thought. I think it'd be nice of all the projects we have going on. It might be 10 or 15, you know, projects. It just kind of have a, you know, like we had that top 10 list for our, you know, our issues with with some homes and property in the in the in the city that they have a top 20 list for us this is everything that's going on and that way you know i was thinking the other day well what what's ever happened to melton hill let's finish paving that and i'm sure if i called you you can tell me what the update is but it'd be nice to have a sheet like that and maybe even prioritize it and, and it might not even be our project it might be the bridge project and and, and you know the, the 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 state projects too but for everybody to be on the same page then that way, if Zach comes up, say, "Hey, this is something I think we really need to do," and we talk about it, then it gets put on the list, you know. And, and Rob, Rob wants to pave certain streets, and you know that could be, you know, that's the paving could be on that list, and when that's going to happen. So that way, too, when people call us and we see people on the street, we'll we'll have more knowledge, more up to date knowledge of everything, because there's a lot of stuff going on. But for us to not even have to call you all the time, there'll be one place we can get, we can see this is what's going on and this is where we're at and so on and so forth. So as a recommendation, I would like to, to have something like that. I don't know how the rest of the council feels, but I think it'd be, it'd be nice to have. Possibly to be put in the city manager's report that we're already getting. Just uh, Yeah, it could be. Okay, appreciate that. Um, under, under ordinances and resolutions. What I want to do, we have quite a few of these, and, and when I read these ordinances and resolutions out, I want to refer to either Roger or Gail or, um, to talk about these so we have a little better understanding, make sure we're on the same page. So under um, first reading of new ordinances, ordinance number 654, this is amending Title 8, Chapter 1 of the Clinton Municipal Code slash intoxicating liquors. So would you like to talk a little bit about that? <laughs> we, uh, of course, the, the voters passed pretty much two to one to allow package liquor stores in Clinton, and that's what this is, this ordinance. Um, by state law, um, there's two things we can do to govern it, and it's only two things we can do, is that is where, where it can be zoned to be or the number of package stores we want. We had a workshop with the MTAS attorneys and our, our um, uh, city ma management uh, person they're highly recommending that we don't even touch the, the part about limiting the numbers. State law almost contradicts itself. It says you can limit them, but you can't limit them to the effect that you make it, un make it unreasonable. So their thought is, and I agree, and we checked with other cities, pretty much the same thing, we control it by zoning. Because I think we all know Oak Ridge has three package stores, two small and a big one. The economy's not going to sustain you know, eight liquor stores in Clinton. Uh, so we've looked at it from the zoning standpoint to allow it in B, B2 and B4. B2 is pretty much the boulevard and Clinch Avenue. B4 is the interstate zone up at the interstate. So it's pretty much in the commercial area. B, B1 is downtown, so you couldn't have it downtown, Market Street, and we're there. And then we're talking just package stores. Um, any residential area, none of that you could have. So it really, and we provided a map, a zoning map in your packet. If you look at, can pull it up, the pink area, which is very limited, is B2 and B4. If we don't pass something within 60 days, it comes to effect anyway. We don't, we don't have any way to regulate it. So that's why we need to pass something to at least have some regulation over it. However, we don't issue the license. The license is issued through the state of Tennessee, so we really have no say so over that. Now the, prob the other problem with making limits on it was if you do three, what's the procedure on who, who gets those three? Uh, no one person can have more than two, but somebody could come in and apply for two, and another one, that it could create a monopoly, so that's why they recommend not. It said no more than 50%, how I read it. Um, what's? Well, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, but, you're fine. But one thing that kind of I was going to question about was under 8 slash 107, it says no retail licensee shall directly or indirectly hold more than two retail licenses. And in no e event shall a retail licensee directly or indirectly hold more than 50% of the 
so of those licenses. Right. So, so if you were partners too, you could only be no yeah. more than two partnerships with them. So, so how is this process? So, if somebody comes in and, and, and picks up an application, they just do that at the front desk, or they have to appear in front of the council. Mm -mm. It's all done at the front it's desk, much right? Like the wine in the, the wine in uh, the grocery stores. It's all licensed okay. by the state. So nobody would nobody would come to council to, no, to ask when for they that. come to council, they would okay. do the same as wine and grocery stores. They would ask for a letter of appropriateness. A, a certificate. A certificate. That the mayor council would actually sign. They have to provide their own background check from third party vendor. Um, so yes, yeah, it's very very similar to the wine and grocery store. But once again, state law says if we don't issue them that, within 60 days, they can go get it anyway, yeah. get their license. So it's... So the only really control we have on this is where it's located mm -hmm. in numbers, and it doesn't make sense to do the numbers. So that's, we still control the beer, the beer, yes. the beer board, but all liquor, whether it's a package store or liquor by the drink, is controlled by the state. State of Tennessee, yes. And the number is really controlled by the market. Yes. Think about it. I mean, it's... Yeah. We've only had a couple inquiries that, that felt like were serious. We've had several others, but we've in the two inquiries we've had that I think are serious are both up the interstate. Or is is the the window open to for them to apply? Can they apply now? Yes. No, not, I think no. Not no, it will be after we have the so Probably yes. be the yes, first of February. Yeah. Okay. And right. in regards to beer. Obviously, if, if you look at 8117, it mentions that anyone that qualifies for, for this permit would automatically qualify for a beer permit, providing they are in compliance with our beer permit requirements. Okay. And that's that's pretty much the way it is now with yeah. you know, on-site consumption. It's gotcha. Okay. Um, I interrupted you, Roger. Was there, was there anything else you want to talk it, about yeah. that? That's Any questions for Roger on this? Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve? So we have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman McBride? Councilman Harrell? Yes. Councilman Stamey? Yes. Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Fair? Yes. Mayor Burton? Yes, ordinance number 654 passes on first reading. Second and final reading of ordinances, um, ordinance number 653, this is smoking at playgrounds. <clears throat> yes, we passed it on first reading last month and this is simply where state legislatures some years ago took it away from the cities to whether or not you could uh, not have smoking in playgrounds or park areas where they gave it back to the cities that, that if we want to pass an ordinance and we did it in ordinance form to make it a misdemeanor offense uh, before city court. So our recommendation is definitely to put it back in. You not be able to smoke around playgrounds or the adjacent areas to playgrounds. And we will post signs. We've had a few signs up already, but we'll make sure before spring we, we post quite a bit of signage. So like JC Park, with the, with the, with that, where the playground is, just that area of the, you'll, ha you'll have some designated area that, that what, what constitute as the playground area. Yes. And have signs for that area. Mm -hmm. But the whole park will not be mm -hmm. no smoking. You know, my thought would be the playground, of course, the adjacent area around it, mm -hmm. probably your, your ball, ball fields, because they're considered playground, especially your bleacher areas, concession areas. But you're, you know, there is open space there. And we have the discretion to, or you have the discretion mm -hmm. to designate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about vaping? It does not include that it? vaping. That it does not include vaping, vaping for whatever reason. Okay. Smokeless tobacco. Yeah. Just okay. strictly just smoking. smoking. Okay. Just smoking. Okay. Just, yeah, vaping specifically is covered in there. Okay. Any other questions? Brian, you have anything? You look for like still over there. Well, you just said vaping is included, but it's. Well, no, it's, it's specifically. It says it's, that this does not include the use uh, okay. of a vapor product. Right. Right. That's what it says. Smoking. Any other questions? There's a lot allowed. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman McBride? Councilman Harrell? Yes. Councilman Stanley? Yes. Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Thayer? Yes. Mayor Burton? Yes. Ordinance number 653 passes on second and final reading. Under resolutions, <laughs> resolution, resolution number 805, 
This is the property assessor reappraisal cost sharing agreement. I'll give Gail, want to talk to that? Yeah, I'll give a little history and I'll let <clears> Gail do it. There was some issues from CTAS, MTAS, and the cities on what the property assessor could charge the cities. Um, we worked, when I say we, myself, the other city managers, and they kind of asked me and Gail since we were here in town to negotiate a new agreement with a property assessor that kind of benefit both parties. We worked on this with uh, John Alley and Mayor Frank probably for six, seven, eight months back and forth. We finally got the attorneys, Phil Cry and Jay Yeager involved, but we finally came up with an agreement that all the cities are in agreement with. Uh, John Alley's in agreement with it, so we needed to get it passed so we could put it in place. Gail will give you the details of it. Um, the property assessor charges us two different fees. One as a percentage of all personal property audits, they hire an outside contractor. This is basically to cover the property assessor's cost for reappraisal, which is every year. Uh, when he, uh, in the past, we've paid about $3,500 a year. Uh, we received notice it was going to be $41,000. So a significant increase. And basically what happened is uh, CTAS consultants decided that they could bill for all cost in their office. And anyway, it was a formula issue. So basically with this agreement, the law says outside of an agreement, you follow state law, which is not very clear as to how it is calculated. So we basically took the state law and came up with a formula, basically trying to limit which cost we would pay a percentage of. And so with the new formula, we'll probably pay somewhere around $17,000 a year for it, for this part of the audit. I mean, and of course you believe that's a fair and accurate number. Yes. We thought it was a good compromise yes. and that's, that's yeah. the approach we yeah. took towards it. Any other questions for Gail or Roger on this? That's something you have to agree to, or is that something that's just the formula tells you? Well, we came up with a formula in mm -hmm. the agreement. We could have come up with any agreement we chose to, but what huh. we did is we took the base formula, which is in state law, and kind of tweaked it. The, the big issue was the property assessor's office historically has had two different accounting codes. Property Assessor's Office, Reappraisal Office. And when CTAS got involved, they wanted to put all those together and pay this big percentage of it. And um, through MTAS attorneys, we did a little bit of history on that law and how it had come about, and they felt like CTAS was in error. Um, and the CTAS consultant had not really went through the legal side of it so it, it's, a, it's a reasonable, uh, a lot of people don't understand that even though we only do a reappraisal every five years, they work on reappraisal every year. And so um, it's, it's a reasonable expense, I think. Make a motion, we approve. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Thank you, Gail. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman Fry? Councilman Harrell? Yes. Councilman Stamey? Yes. Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Farrell? Yes. Mayor Burton? Yes. Resolution number 805 passes on first and final reading. Resolution number 806, this is the LPRF, LWCF, and the RTP grant application for J.C. Park. This is the same resolution we did last month except out of a public hearing that we had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had some good input from some citizens, and what we kind of decided was to make the pool area uh, bigger than what was originally planned. We still want to do a splash pad, but uh, the new pool design will be pretty much close to what the indoor pool at, at um, the community center is. So we got plenty of land up there to do it. So in being so, we needed to tweak the budget a little bit, but when we were talking to our Partas consultant, which is Parks and Recreation Technical Advisory Service, they recommend that since a, a good portion of the project was also renovating the, the bathrooms, locker rooms, the entrances, we had to bring all those up to ADA standards, and right now there are none of them are. So it's been a big renovation project for that. We pretty much have to gut the building. 
we're afraid we might run into some more problems. So they recommended that we apply for the full amount, which is a million dollars instead of the 690 that was original. If we get into the project and don't need it, we just simply don't spend it. But if we get there and we run into additional problems in, in the renovation, especially the bathrooms, the money will be there to have. So it was their recommendation and I think it's a pretty good with problem. What's the timeline on the grant? Oh Lord, the way they've been doing it, it would probably be It'll be spring. Spring before it's awarded. Now they've they've as we know in this last grant we did on South Clinton Park, they've added so much to it. I, I couldn't tell you when a start date could be. Uh, well, usually was, when you're awarded it, you were pretty much ready to go. And we learned with the South Clinton Park, we thought that was going to be the case there. And it took us several months to get through the, the paperwork. But if we got it in the spring, it wouldn't be ready for the summer. Well, what's our plan B if the, we don't get the grant? I think we bring it back to four council and decide if we want to fund the project and how we want to fund it. I mean, you know, we could keep it the same. Uh, we could renovate what we've got there now. You're still probably talking five, six hundred thousand dollars, even at that, because the pool. I think the price we had on it was like three fifty-four, but you still have to renovate the the rest of the facilities. So it's but a million is the we think the total price to do it. No, I, I would think seven fifty, but it was just their recommendation. We go ahead and ask for it in case we need it. If we if we are awarded the grant, is there any way we can start using our our portion early we, we have to it all has to be kind of orchestrated together so they get the notice to proceed and that's what we argued with on the South Clinton Park because uh, I guess it was you cannot do anything until well we get you remember we went and got awarded the grant in October at Big Ridge yeah. State Park and it was June before they gave us the notice to proceed and due to some pressure we were the first one in the state to get the notice to proceed that year would, would the pool be able to open as is in the so we will not have a pool next summer more likely no okay so it'd be the following year i'd say that no it probably it would be tough i sort of say you know if we knew we would get turned down we could possibly start on it in the spring but i just don't know with covid how much how much we could get done i agree any other questions mayor you also need to probably in your motion um I don't know if you rescind. want to rescind resolution 804, or, but the one we did last month, you probably need to make that as you part mean make of this. A, I'll make a motion that we rescind 804 and pass resolution 806 as written. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Yes. Councilman McBride. Councilman Harrell. Yes. Councilman Steinman. Yes. Councilman Hatmaker. Yes. Councilman Fair. Yes. Mayor Burton. Yes, um, resolution number 804 is rescinded and resolution number 806 passes on first and final reading. Resolution number 807, opposition to establishment of drug treatment facility. You go read it. <laughs> um, the resolution. I can't, I won't have it. You have it in front of you? <coughs> Give it to Larry. He's a better reader than I am. <laughs> closer to you too. Uh, whereas the city of Clinton has received a letter of intent from the state of Tennessee Health Services and Development, Ag Development Agency as an official notice that BHG LXIV LLC doing business as BHG Clinton Treatment Center intends to file an application for a certificate of need for the establishment of a non-residential substitution based treatment center and to initiate opiate addiction treatment at 180 Clinch Avenue, Clinton. And whereas the mayor and city council are concerned as to the disruption such a clinic will have within the city and the negative effect it could have in crime rates, citizen safety, and home values, and whereas the proposed location is in close proximity to three park areas, which are frequently visited by children and teens of all ages, and whereas it is critical to the vitality of the city of Clinton that we protect and sustain our small town atmosphere that for decades has proven to be among our city's most valuable assets. Now therefore be it resolved that the council of the city of Clinton, Tennessee strongly opposes the location of a non-residential substitution based treatment facility in the city of Clinton and encourages all citizens and businesses to contact their state legislators to voice their opposition to this facility. Did 
Yeah. Basically, that kind of said the history of it. The mayor received the letter three weeks ago. Um, we've met with MTAS, we've met with our risk management, uh, public entity partners. The zone they're looking at, which is the old advanced auto building in South Clinton, is a B2 zone, which medical clinics are allowed in. So on the zoning standpoint, <coughs> there's not much we can do. Uh, they still have to go before this health uh, services board to get their license. It was recommended that we do this resolution and send to them so it's not a done deal that they've got the license and moved here. Our recommendation is, like I said, not a whole lot we can do here now, but uh, <laughs> that we send this to planning commission for future use, kind of like we did the pain clinics a couple years ago, and uh, let planning commission work on some, some zoning issues with it. We just have to be careful uh, when you talk about these clinics and stuff, you can zone out other clinics and actually even pharmacies so we have to be real careful how we do do the ordinance so we don't have a lot you're saying we can do about this and we're still meeting i mean we're still in conversation it's not a done deal we're still in conversation with both parties i actually met with asap's new director last week she was very excited to help us with it so she was going to do research kind of vet the company out and everything she has not got back with me yet i think she's been on the job about two and a half weeks but so we've still got some other other things we're looking at. When is their desired opening day? Don't know. I think before. I think first. Then what I understood, they have to go before the. What is it? Health. Health services. Health services and okay. development I board to get their licenses. People have been. Roger, do we have any um, knowledge of the number of these type of facilities in the county? No, that's actually something ASAP's director was going to try to do some research. She asked me if it would be okay if she did it. I, I welcomed her help. So she was going to try to get several uh, pieces of information put together for us. Are we in discussion? Yes. Okay. Um, that's not I make a motion that we approve the resolution 807 as written. Second. Have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Now we're in discussion. Now right. we're in discussion. <laughs> Thanks. Um, just uh, by way of information, uh, I, I was a former prosecutor in the United States Marine Corps, and I was also a defense attorney, and I uh, worked here locally in the defense bar and am intimately familiar with, um, with the scourge that, that drugs and the opiate uh, crisis has had on our community. I remember in my, when I first started practicing, um, it seemed that meth was a, was a big issue, and over time, the meth sort of disappeared, and pills appeared. And um, I've watched it ravage families. I um, also worked um, in the juvenile court system uh, with the Department of Children's Services, and I can speak firsthand um, of the, the, the problems that the opiate crisis created. However, I am strongly against, as much as I can be, um, against that facility going into what is going to be <clears throat> one of our front doors to our city. And uh, in his book, Sam Kionas wrote a book in 2015 called Dreamland. It was about the opiate crisis in our, in Appalachia. And uh, Mexican cartel targets these types of facilities specifically to traffic in black tar heroin. And it's it's pretty brilliant plan when you think about it. Those are the people, those are the people that, that, that are in the crisis. Those are the people that are needing the drugs. Those are the people that are trying to get the help. What better place to, to go than right to the source? And so that type of criminal activity is well documented. It's not just me saying it, and it's dangerous to our community. Um, and I, again, um, as a father, of, of, of young children in this community, um, as a um, husband of a business owner in this community, and in this community, um, I, and, and as an individual himself that, that loves his town and loves his, his, his fellow uh, citizens, I just cannot in any stronger terms say how I highly disapprove and, and do not wish that this facility to go in, again, as much as I can. Uh, but. I think people need help, and I think those people that are in the throes of addiction need compassion, kindness, and care. I think it needs to be another location that's not at the front door of our beautiful town, particularly with what 
Um, the Hollingsworth Foundation is putting in over there. Um, it's just, I can't think of a worse use of that property. Thank you, Mayor. Can we change the zoning? Well, that would be my recommendation. We've, we've looked at it with other cities. We had two other cities near us, kind of the situation we were, we changed their zoning beforehand, got sued and lost in federal court. Uh, we had a similar thing here in Clinton about 20 years ago, type thing, and we, we changed some zoning, went to federal court, and we lost. The city did. Uh, my recommendation would be go ahead and, and, and send it to Planning Commission for future uses. Once again, not saying that this one's going to get its license, but if we go ahead and, and be proactive and look at where we could zone them to be, we can't zone them out. That's one thing they've told us, too. We cannot completely zone them out, but we could zone them. I think it was one city, kind of like the pain clinics, was in the industrial areas is where you could have them. Is there any way that the city can send a communication to the board that's approving this and say... That's where this resolution is. Okay, yes, so that's, that's that resolution is going to go to somebody in Nashville that's yes. making a decision. And we've talked to the lieutenant governor's office. We've been Thank in touch with him on it. Um, that's what we encourage you all to, if you, you know, see John Reagan, any of them. Can this resolution also be passed by the county? My, I haven't directly talked to him just through emails, but I think Rick, Rick Meredith was going to introduce okay. him for the county. Yes. He can it probably was recommended just... to the county do it also. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I know I talked to Councilman McBride, too, just uh, more fact-finding mm -hmm. information. And, and as a pharmacist, I mean, I think he was just as, as passionate as, as Zach was as far as not wanting this in that, in that location. And, yeah, uh, I'll have to agree with Zach. You know, the negatives, unfortunately, outweigh the positives. Yeah. And I'm not saying, I'm not an expert enough to say if those type of facilities are needed or not, but it's certainly not needed where it's positioned in our town and, and right in our major thoroughfare and, and what, we, what we've tried to do publicly and what private investors are trying to do that area, that is, I think it's really going to, to um, s slow that progress that we, we all want. The, the board there in Nashville that approves these, that surely they have some sort of oversight. Uh, some, surely somebody oversees that. Do we know that process that we could, you know, work that angle? I don't know if we have any geographical information or not. Just yeah, I mean, I can reach back out to the lieutenant governor's office and see who. They got to have some sort of checks and balances, I would think, above them, correct? I would assume. In some way. Agency or being a state agency, yes. So we use every tool we got. Yeah, oh, yeah. we need to use every avenue. Well, it was, like I said, it was recommended we start with this resolution and get that to them quick, so we wanted to get it before the holidays. If it couldn't be stopped, could it be slowed down? Again, that's in their ballpark. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think what we're doing is, is the most effective, and I, I think together, hopefully with the county, I can't speak because I don't have personal knowledge of what the county is going to do, but if if local governments present a unified front and um, and we have, I think, discussions with our representatives, our duly uh, elected representatives, particularly the lieutenant governor, I think that's that's a good first step. It would be nice if he could write some type of letter also. And I'll reach out that. to Mayor Frank Monday morning. I think they meet Monday night. I think they do, so I'll reach out to her. I may even come on this afternoon. I don't know if it's not on the agenda. I don't think we can take any action. But we I can, think, we can let the them know anyway. I think the chambers actually, the chambers get involved too. Yeah, yeah. And they are. maybe uh, ASAP. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think Roger's got a good plan and, and made the contacts he's needed to make. We just need to make sure that we need to do everything humanly possible for this not to happen so we can tell as our body. As a body, yeah, this is about yeah. all we can do right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that being said, um, uh, e no further discussion. Have roll call, please. Councilman Dan. Yes. Councilman McBride. Councilman Harrell. Yes. Councilman Stamey. Yes. Councilman Hatmaker. Yes. Councilman Farron. Yes. Mayor Burton. Yes. Resolution number 807 passes on first and final reading. Any old business before us? Well, I was going to check back on the bridge. There was an update with pictures and whatnot. Any, you said you were going to check about some correspondence with maybe Lynn to see about the bike walking trail has some sort of barrier so people will feel safe to use it to get to a spire park. I don't think he's getting anything back from the letter he wrote. I mean, we've met with them three or four times about this, and they've told us they would give us something. 
But we don't know if it's a line written, you know, a line drawn on the concrete or some sort of barrier. No, well, it can't be a concrete barrier. They told us that would take a complete redesign, but we've asked for some type of vertical something, whether it be fencing, delineators, or something to separate them. Okay. And I'm sure with these other TDOT projects that we're going to be asking for on the red lights, I can be having some face to face conversations. Just to me, kind of defeats the purpose. We've got a spire over there. We want to make it safe to get people across the bridge. Good point. Um, any other old business? ET, you got anything? No, I'm good. Any new business? Uh, yeah, I've got a comment I'd like to make. Uh, Ken Liner, thank you for coming out and covering our meetings. We appreciate you being our hometown newspaper. And, of course, you do a great job with the Blaze Athletic Program. So thank you. That was his real point. It was more about the Blaze <laughs> comment than anything else. Um, I just wanted to, to just a couple of points, um, really brag on the employees, I mean, in, in the, in also the, the schools. I mean, y'all, y'all, people just don't realize what y'all have been through during this whole pandemic. Um, I'd like to, I don't know what percentage of people that have been positive COVID see staff. It's been pretty high. It's been higher than the national average, I can say that. And um, especially our, our first responders, fire and police, um, I know they, they've, they've, it's been a challenge to, to, to provide the services, but I don't think from, uh, from the eye of, the, of, our, of our residents, they've noticed any, anything that's slowed down. But it's, it's been a great challenge, and I tip my hat out, off to department heads and certainly to Roger to keep the, the city going, and, and it's, it's going to continue for a while. But, um, but I am confident that better days are ahead, and I was talking to Kelly earlier. I'm so happy to see 2021 coming because if we do what we need to do um, as far as wearing a mask and, and you know, I, I think everybody should get a vaccine. I know there's a lot of controversy around that. But what our actions are is, 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 is it's going to be a, a shorter period of time for us to get back to, to living normally. And, um, and it's, it's going to be all up to us to, to make that happen. So um, with that being said. One, one other thing I'll add, and you made me think of it there. I've heard nothing but great reports upon our fire department dealing with the Carlisle file. Mm -hmm. That they did a fantastic job, used our new tower truck. And, and they have, they, all I've heard is great compliments about how they handled that. And in a city our size, that's, that's quite an accomplishment. I agree. I agree. With that being said, I want to wish everybody, you have something else? I just would say, hopefully, it looks like next week our public safety police and fire will be able to get the vaccine. Uh, we were hoping it was this week, now we've been told probably next week. So we're hoping we can get that on them. the health department. Yes, yeah. through the health department. Kelly, are, are teachers in line for that up, up, up front? Of course. I think we're phase two. Okay. After health care emergency. Okay. Tier three, maybe. Tier three. Yeah. Tier three. Yeah. Tier three. Tier three. Yeah. Tier three. Yeah, because you're going to get the geriatric population that's after. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to call you back to teach, Larry. <laughs> I'm already I thought E.T. already got it. Larry said he wanted to have lunch with me. Okay. Without, with that being said, I wish everybody a, a happy and, and just, again, uh, back to normal 2021. God bless everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.